Hello and welcome back to our study of Ruth in our Bible month of second chapter of Ruth as Naomi and Ruth return to Bethlehem and uh, start their lives again. I thought it would be good though today this time to start with a more uh, reflective opening, more reflective beginning. So we'll start with a little bit of um, meditation as it were as you think on the week that's gone before. Our opening prayers are more a meditation than prayers. So you need to just sit and be still for a few moments and reflect upon and think upon the things you've seen and experienced in the past week. Whether we've done it ourselves or we've seen it through the television, the newspapers and the media. We come before God and bring them to Him. And as you think, I wonder if you see why you noticed or experienced people of peace, people of hope, people of joy, people showing love and people who offered rest. We come before the God who offers peace, hope, joy, love and rest. And God greets us wherever we are. So we open ourselves now to that God. Thanks be to you, O Lord. Amen. Our first hymn is a reminder of God's faithfulness. Now, although Naomi may have not experienced that totally, still we find God is a faithful God. And so we sing, Great is thy faithfulness. <laughs>
a prayer of approach. We come before you, gracious God, just as we are. We come with our weaknesses and our vulnerabilities. We come with our fears and apprehensions. We come with faith and doubt. We come to offer and receive. We come to you, the King of love, in the name of your Son and in the power of your Spirit. Amen. Our prayer of confession. Lord, you have called us to the privilege of service, but we have failed to serve. You have given us the blessing of peace, but we have chosen discord. You have loved as a shepherd tends his sheep, but we have strayed from your way. Forgive us, and show us the path of obedience and faithfulness that your Son trod. In his name we pray. Amen. A prayer of praise and thanksgiving. We unite with the whole world in praising you, Creator God. We come before you with gladness and thanksgiving. We praise your goodness. We praise your faithfulness. We praise your tenderness. We are yours and we worship you. We bless your name forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So we take up the story of Ruth and her mother-in-law Naomi, who have returned from Ruth's homeland of Moab, to Naomi's home of Bethlehem, after all that has befallen them in Moab. Now Naomi had a kinswoman on her husband's side, a prominent rich man of the family of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth, the Moabite, said to Naomi, Let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain, behind someone in whose sight I may find favour. She said to her, Go, my daughter. So she went. She came and gleaned in the field behind the reapers. As it happened, she came to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. Just then Boaz came from Bethlehem. He said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to his servant, who was in charge of the reapers, to whom does this young woman belong? The servant who was in charge of the reapers answered, She is the Moabite who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. She said, Please let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the reapers. So she came, and she has been on her feet from early this morning until now, without resting even for a moment. Then Boaz said to Ruth, Now listen, my daughter. Do not go to glean in another field, or leave this one, but keep close to my young women. Keep your eyes on the field that is being reaped, and follow behind them. I have ordered the young men not to bother you. If you get thirsty, go to the vessels and drink from what the young men have drawn. Then she fell prostrate, with her face to the ground, and said to him, Why have I found favour in your sight? that you should take notice of me when I am a foreigner. But Boaz answered her, All that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told me, and how you left your father and mother and your native land and came to a people that you did not know before. May the Lord reward you for your deeds, and may you have a full reward from the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. And she said, 
May I continue to find favour in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me and spoken kindly to your servant, even though I am not one of your servants. At mealtime, Boaz said to her, Come here and eat some of this bread and dip your morsel in the sour wine. So she sat beside the reapers and he heaped up for her some parched grain. She ate until she was satisfied and she had some left over. When she got up to glean, Boaz instructed his young men, let her glean among the standing sheaves and do not reproach her. You must also pull out some handfuls for her from the bundles and leave them for her to glean and do not rebuke her. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Tom, Tom Cochran, a philosopher, wrote, Reason and emotion are often supposed to be at odds with each other. From one perspective, our emotions are like unruly toddlers, demanding and whimsical, and need to be held in check by the adult intellect. From another perspective, the rational mind is cold and calculating and needs the warmth of the passions to grasp what really matters. Reason and intellect are two aspects of our personality. And sometimes we think that we can be all emotional and that's not a good thing. And sometimes we think we can be too critical, too rational and be cold and calculating. And that's not a good thing. The two go together. But I'd like us to look today at the, the feelings, the emotions that were engendered within the people, within the stories we've heard today. First of all, there's Naomi. Now, in the chapter before, the few verses before that this reading we've just heard begins, Naomi says, I'm no longer pleasant. Naomi means pleasant. I'm Mara. I'm bitter because God's been bitter to me. And so it seems that Naomi is down. We'll probably say depressed. She's hit rock bottom. She's lost everything she had, all her livelihood, all her support, all her husband and sons have died and taken away. She's come back to her hometown, to Bethlehem, the house of bread, because there is bread here once again, with her daughter-in-law, with Ruth, who's our heroine. Um, and she's just lost everything. No wonder she's depressed. It seems from the passage there, we're just there, that nobody helped her that nobody was there for her she and ruth are in this picture sitting in their in their home wherever that is on their own with no help until ruth decides i've got to do something about this i've got to go and get food so off she goes to glean gleaning is a a good um biblical principle to follow in Leviticus and Deuteronomy, um, people were commanded, farmers were commanded to let the widows and the aliens and the orphans glean, to let those who had no income, those in poverty, collect the um, the leavings from their from their harvesting, and they were told not to to, to kind of gather it all up, not to be so conscientious in, in the harvesting that was nothing left for them, to leave the bits at the edges for the aliens and the widows and the orphans. And so uh, Ruth went to follow that biblical principle. I don't know if she knew about it before she came to Bethlehem, but she went to glean to get the food she could for herself and a mother-in-law, because of course there, there was no universal credit, there were no food banks, uh, people were expected to care for those in need of their own mat, of their own whim, their own will, as it were, to follow them and to, um, to care for those in need. So what was Ruth's emotion? Well, I suspect there was love 
for Hermod Renault there. We talked about the four loves last week that um, C.S. Lewis talked about, that this family love, this storge love for her mother. And because of her love for her mother, she went out to try and find uh, something to eat, try and get some food for her uh, and her mother. And purely by chance, and we'll come back to that chance in a moment, she found herself gleaning in the field of Boaz, a near relative of her father-in-law, of Naomi's husband. Boaz seems to have been a good man. It's interesting that when the temple was built years after this, there were two big pillars in the temple, and one of them was called Boaz, the other called Jachim. So it seems as if our Boaz was a pillar of the local community rather than a pillar in the temple. He more than followed the law and Ruth was well blessed with the fact that she went into that particular field because as an alien, as a foreigner, she had no idea where she could go, who would be safe, where would be safe, who would look after her. And of course, the society being what it was, she was laying herself open to her being abused physically, mentally and sexually. And so it, it was indeed fortunate, it was a coincidence, although people say coincidence happen more, when, more often when you pray. And if Ruth, as we saw last week, was going to follow um, your people with my people and your God, my God, as she said, then perhaps this is part of her understanding, just as a wanting to be a Jew, wanting to follow the Jewish God, she was praying. And so her prayers were answered. She found her and Naomi's prayers were answered. She found herself in the field of Boaz. She was protected. She went out of love to glean in the fields and she was well rewarded. So she gleaned in the field until evening. Then she beat out what she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah of barley. She picked it up and came into the town, and her mother-in-law saw how much she had gleaned. Then she took out and gave her what was left over after she herself had been satisfied. Her mother-in-law said to her, Where did you glean today, and where have you worked? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. So she told her mother-in-law with whom she had worked that day, and said, The name of the man with whom I worked today is Boaz. Then Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, Blessed be he by the Lord, whose kindness has not forsaken the living or the dead. Naomi also said to her, The man is a relative of ours, one of our nearest kin. Then Ruth the Moabite said, He even said to me, Stay close by my servants until they have finished all my harvest. Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is better, my daughter, that you go out with his young women, otherwise you might be bothered in another field. So she stayed close to the young women of Boaz, gleaning until the end of the barley and the wheat harvests, and she lived with her mother-in-law. So Ruth was blessed. Ruth was allowed, encouraged to garner, to glean, I beg your pardon, in the field of Boaz. And she was well blessed. She gathered an ephah of barley. That's 22 litres of barley. It's an awful lot, particularly for one who was gleaning at the edges of the field. So no doubt when Ruth returned, not just with that, but there with her, the remains of the roasted barley she'd had for her, for her meal that she couldn't eat, to her mother-in-law there was great joy. I wonder how Naomi felt at that. Perhaps there was some, some lift in her feelings, some uplift, because she found there were people who cared. After all, if she'd gone home and nobody had been caring for her, as we suggested earlier, then there was a sign that there was somebody who cared. And so there would have been, the emotions would have been high. There would have been great joy because Naomi had gathered and they could eat that day because that was the social service of the day. That was all she had to live on, the dependence on uh, the kindness of strangers. The emotion. What emotion do we think Boaz felt as well? 
there's an interesting little uh, comment in there boaz comes to the field says the lord be with you and, and, and he's obviously some good religious kind of man a praying kind of person himself a caring kind of person and he more than followed the law more than obeyed the law um which says you allow them to glean around the fields ruth could glean not just around the edges of the fields but in with the where the, uh, the stooks were as well and he even told his, his workers to pull out some so she could have more because um he was a kind man there's another kind of love there that the not just the family love the, the brotherly sisterly love, the the, the um the love of humankind love for, for one another Ruth is, uh, boaz is showing himself to be a, a, a righteous man it's an interesting com comment isn't it when, when he, he asks the uh, the the workers the foreman who's that that girl of all the foreman can say as well she's a moab she's a moabite she's 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 a foreigner she's a refugee she's not worth bothering about as is implied there but for boaz she was Boaz sought to help her out of the goodness of his heart. Although, I wonder if there wasn't some uh, romantic love in there, um, a, a foretaste of what's to come in future chapters. I wonder if he didn't think she looks nice. I could, uh, I, I could make uh, make do with a wife. I could. She she would make me a lovely wife. Perhaps we don't know. But I suspect there was some some sense of that in uh, in. Um, in Boaz's mind as he as he took took, took uh, his first view of her emotions you see they that God used the emotions of all the different people involved in that story to use for his greater good I guess as we are all of us suffering at this moment in time isolation and um, and the pandemic then our emotions run run riot we we find it difficult to know how how to follow and how to do to to live our lives and our feelings our emotions are up and down there's joy there's happiness there's sadness there's grief there's all kinds of emotions and god understands our emotions and god uses our emotions for his greater good as he used the emotions of boaz to care for uh, Ruth and Naomi as he, he used the, the emotions of Naomi and the emotions of Ruth to, to, to continue this story to go to go on with this story for, for a wonderful ending as we're going to see uh, God understands our emotions understands our feelings so as Christians we're called yes we're called to use our head we're called to use our minds and our brains but our emotions God uses them as well we are a people of emotion and a people of reason and those two working together will work for god's greater good amen when i was uh, watching the joe Rand and her family leading worship last week on facebook i was struck by the uh, row of emoticons icons whatever you want to call them emojis perhaps is the best word for them uh, along the bottom of the screen a whole load of different emotions were portrayed in, in those emojis and i thought they make a good starter for our prayer for uh, intercessory prayer so i've taken them, I've turned them around because the first one was the thumbs up which i always think is a great way of saying amen so that's the last one but our emojis lead our thinking as we pray for those in need around the world anger in the silence we bring to god those situations which have angered us this week where that anger was righteous at the treatment of others we pray for those situations where that anger was selfish we ask God's forgiveness and pray for those who angered us. Sadness. We pray for those who are grieving at this time. Grieving loss of loved ones. Grieving loss of self-worth. Grieving loss of jobs or livelihoods, grieving loss of homes. We think of those who are sick, ill, 
or in pain in body, mind or spirit. Surprise or shock. We think of those things that have surprised or shocked us this week. We pray for shocking situations, abuse, prejudice or discrimination, violence, anger or war. joy. We think of those starting new things, parents of newborn children, those receiving good news, perhaps a negative COVID-19 test, for those who lack joy, whose lives are full of sadness, that others may know the joy of the Lord. Love. Pray for those in the caring professions, doctors and nurses, support workers, all who care for others in whatever way at this time. Pray too for those seeking to care for the nation, for our government, their advisers and the difficult decisions they face daily. We ask these as we ask all our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amazing Grace, the hymn we're going to sing next is that John Newton's testimony hymn speaks about how he discovered that amazing grace of God. So we sing that now, and I hope you've enjoyed our worship, and may God be with you in the coming weeks. Bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs>
we give thanks that you are a God of generosity. Help us to be givers and receivers of generosity as people who belong to you. We pray especially at this time for all those who are struggling to put food on the table. Open our eyes to the things we can do to share your harvest at this time of uncertainty. We offer these prayers in and through the name of Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, and to the glory of God the Father. Amen.